Hi everyone, welcome to a recorded riffing episode of Words, Images, and Worlds. I'm going to try to use that. That might be like a sub-branch of these episodes or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this episode, I'm delighted to be talking with someone who was just talking with me last weekend about this time, uh, Ryan Permazon, the host of And I Quote. Did I get your last name? Was that Close. You 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 went a little fancy with it, but it's actually oh, Permison. But it's all good. Permison. It's Ryan yeah. Ryan Permison's the full name. But you're all good, man. We're all friends here, so it's not like I'm going to hate on you or give you any take away any friendship points. Great, great. That we we won't uh, keep no. like a scoreboard or anything no, like that. No, yeah, of course not. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for having me on. And I quote last mm -hmm. weekend, and thank you now for coming on Words, Images, and Worlds, and talking a little bit about the other side of the equation as well. Uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to do it. And, uh, you know, in this world, we got to learn to pay it forward sometimes. So I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, much appreciated. Much appreciated. You've just passed episode 200 of your show, I believe. Yep. I believe we just dropped our, was it 206th, I want to say, episode this, or 200. Actually, I think we're up to 207 now. So yeah, it's it's a plethora. It's a plethora, yeah. Hiffy. Uh, yeah, yeah, 207 <laughs> episodes of And I Quote have been dropped, and uh, it's been a blast, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, we'll dig in to talk a little bit about the process and how you got into this world, but before we do that, I know that there's a bookshelf behind you, and I'm always interested to hear what people are reading, uh, what you're currently viewing. I know that you're a film buff as well. I don't have the fancy intro of the multiple film clips, but uh, no. but I really okay. enjoyed that. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, that was our good friend Josh Bauer of J. Bauer Art on Instagram put together originally. And then when we revamped the channel from Nerd Culture to And I Quote Channel, which is what is known as now, uh, my good friend Case remastered it or re, you know, revamped it a little bit with the updated logo and updated graphics. So thank you to both Josh Bauer, J. Bauer Art and uh, Case of the Dutch Star Wars guy on YouTube for putting that intro for, for, uh, for us together because that's a great intro it speaks to my personality and it also speaks to my uh, love of film so i think the intro i think is just it's just right perf perf yeah uh so so anything that you're, you're currently viewing currently reading checking out that's a great question so yeah you see this bookshelf behind me here what the problem is this is a tbr bookshelf uh nothing's really been read yet so uh, oh I will, yeah i i, it, it, I love the tbr it's yeah. a TBR list. Yeah. For those of you who are wondering, it stands for to be read. So what I'm currently reading, I'll give you some examples here because I do have bookmarks for these, by the way. I just want to let you know. So cool, cool. Yeah, excuse me. First one is called it's a quick read story from Stormgate Press. That's written by uh, Charles F. Milhouse of StormgatePress.com. Nice. It's called The Purple Mystique. Uh, it's uh, set in the 19, I want to say 1930s, 40s, something like that. She's a mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of an Avenger wearing a purple trench coat, purple purple uh, fedora, long wide-brimmed wide hat, uh, writing the wrongs of injustice. It's a quick reads book, so it's uh, 35 pages, so that's good. That looks um, cool. I'm a few pages into it. I'm loving it. Uh, well done, Charles F. Milhouse. I love you, buddy. Uh, and this one I'm a huge fan of. I love this one. This is Snow Hunt, written by, excuse me, let me uh, uncover that, Bobby Nash of Ben Books. Mm -hmm. Uh, he writes crime fiction, but he also dabbles in a lot of other genres of fiction. And this is about a former government agent, Abraham Snow, who is now turned uh, into a um, private security officer. He works for his uh, grandfather's private security firm, uh, Snow Securities, I believe, Bobby. Hopefully I'm getting that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. And he's investigating a, um, uh, a bomber uh, right now in this one called Snow Hunt. This is the latest cool. book. This is book. I want to say it's book seven. I want to say book seven of the series. So lucky number seven, Bobby boy, lucky number seven. Uh, yeah. So this is really, really good. If you are into stuff like uh, Burn Notice or Rockford Files, uh, you know, private eyes going against all odds, kind of like John McClane of Die Hard, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, wrong place, wrong time, you know, kind of thing. Um, this is something that you would want to pick up. And these are kind of like crime fiction slash uh, new pulp. Uh, I want to say. And then something I just dabbled in. This is the first of many uh, pieces of story in this one. Yes. This is a graphic novel. This is uh, The World's Greatest Superheroes, Justice League, written by Paul Dini with artwork by Alex Ross. Nice. Uh, if you're a DC fan, if you're a comic book fan, this has got a series of um, stories from the perspective of all these characters. Hence the reason it's called, you know, Justice League, The World's Greatest Heroes. So you're seeing some of their, you know, adventures or some of the stuff they've been through, some of the traumas they've dealt with uh, through their eyes. I just read the first chapter featuring my favorite right here. This is the goat. This is my boy. Uh -huh, Super uh -huh. Loop. 
Superman's my goat. He's my number one favorite fictional character of all time. Uh, that is some of the stuff that I am currently reading. Uh, just to answer cool. the first part of the question. The second part of the question, what am I currently watching? Well, what am I not watching? I mean, I'm watching, I'm rewatching episodes of Las Vegas. I'm rewatching episodes of Parenthood. Uh, the NBC 2010s uh, series, not the one from the 90s that failed miserably after only one season. Mm-hmm, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Um, I've been rewatching a little bit of The Wonder Years with Fred Savage, uh, which nice. is a classic. That's one of the top five greatest of all time. Hashtag those are the facts. Uh, not just an opinion. No, I'm just kidding. It's an opinion. It's all subjective. <laughs> it's all subjective. Um, let's see. What else have I been watching? I've been watching a little bit of Smallville, a little bit of Smallville, my favorite show mm-hmm. of all time, mm-hmm. which is about, once again, goes back to my love of superman so and i've got i've got batman over here hey the, world's uh, finest world's finest it's absolutely. the world's finest jason it's the world's finest and there's right. nothing wrong with that there is absolutely nothing wrong with liking dc or marvel or star wars there's nothing wrong with liking any of those things so those are some of the things i'm currently reading or at least attempting to read mm-hmm. <laughs> as well as as well as watch because it's a lot of episodes of the last season and it takes up a lot of time which unfortunately Due to my full time job, and then I have a part time job, there's really no how to load up free time for me. There really isn't. So, the only free time I'm using is to put together the great content on our on my channel, and and then I sleep. I have mm-hmm. a bite, That's I have helpful. A bite, I have a bite to eat. You know, we uh, as human beings, we take showers, put on fresh, good looking sets of nerdy clothes, such as Absolutely. this one, Absolutely. and we support and we support our favorite characters and or fandoms or causes. So. That's a bit of my E True Hollywood. It's a little bit of my E True Hollywood story in a nutshell and how crazy my life has been. Love it. Love it. I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to Scott Bakula for being on the cover of the Bobby Nash book. Was that Scott Bakula all the way on the, the right hand side? Just a guy that looks like him. Uh, Just like a, a guy that on looks the right hand like side. Let's take all the that. way on the right. We'll fact check that one. Mm, Maybe. I'll- Little Eric McCormick. I'm not sure. Little, maybe a little bit yeah. of both. I, I don't know, but you know. Uh, it's a great cover. And by the way, these covers, both the Purple Mystique that we showed you earlier and this one are put together by uh, Jeffrey Hayes of Plasma Fire Graphics, where the Those look are nice book covers. matters to you. Visit them online at plasmafiregraphics.com. Let me tell you something. These covers are like posters that you would want to hang on your walls. They I, are. I, I kid you not. Like I'm looking at these old, and I have a lot of uh, books that are presented with covers presented by uh, Plasma Fire Graphics. I want to take those covers and just make them into posters and mount them <laughs> on my wall because Jeffrey Hayes of Plasma Fire Graphics is hashtag lack of boss when it comes Absolutely. to together. They always tell us never to judge a book by its cover, but that's the first thing you see. You do. It's the first thing you see when you're at a bookstore or you're at a comic book convention, which by the way, go to a comic book convention if you haven't done so already. They're a lot of fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, or if you're at your local library, the first thing you see is the cover. So true. if the cover grabs me, I'm going to want to turn it over and look at the synopsis of that story. And if I'm interested, I will purchase or check out because please support your local libraries when you can uh, check out the book. True. Enough. That's, True that's enough. just who I am. Yeah. Right. You, you have me thinking about your busy schedule and you were talking about taking time to eat and sleep. Imagine what we could accomplish if we didn't have to pause for those things. Imagine how much more we could create if we didn't have the necessary uh, eight hours is healthy, I guess, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. of slumber in the evening and those yeah. moments to eat oatmeal or whatever it is that we we fuel ourselves on. Mm. Yeah, that's very that's very true. That's very true. I, I, yeah, if we were like Terminators and we were Skynet and we were living tissue over metal uh, nice, and we didn't nice. have to worry about these such things, then things would be a lot better for us in, in a certain way. Although we don't want to kill John Connor, we don't want to kill Sarah Connor, and we don't want to hurt other human no. beings. If we were Terminators, we just want to not not worry about sleeping or you know eating. We just want to focus on doing the stuff that we love the most, which is whether it's podcasting, whether it's reading books. Uh, honestly, I just want to lock myself in a room full of books and just read for a good while. You know, I wish I could do mm-hmm. that, but unfortunately, Tempest Fugit, right? Time yeah. is fleeting. Tempest, yeah. time is fleeting all the time. Love a good audio book on the commute as I'm uh, mm-hmm. trying to get to the chopper. That's the yep. best. That's the closest people, I've got. A lot, lot of people tell me I should just do the audio books. I'm like, yeah, but I kind of feel better when I have a book in my hand. Same. And, you know, a bit of a physical media type thing it's a touchy feely kind of thing i don't know some people are you know have a different way about going going about how they absorb information i just rather read it from a book than listen to it in my car because yeah if i'm listening to it in my car i i can kind of picture what's going on but at the same time i'm focusing on my driving so i can't yeah. really let my imagination run wild because i got to focus on the road in front of me otherwise i may crash my vehicle and i don't want to do that 
True, true. And I'm usually thinking about 10 other things as I'm listening to audios too. So there's that yeah. aspect of it as well. It's too, it's too much. It's what do you, what do they call it? It's a sensory overload. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what tapped you into this world of, of podcasting, of interviewing folks and putting content out digitally? That's a, uh, once again, this is why we pay him the big bucks, guys. No, I'm That's, just kidding. It uh, took me hours to think of that question. Yeah, it took me hours to think of this question, man. No, no, it's, it's a great, no, but in all sincerity, it's a wonderful question. So in the very beginning, when I was about five or six, when I was in elementary school, I wanted to become an actor at one point. I, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to entertain people and make them laugh as much as Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, all these great actors were doing in their uh, during the course of their careers, right? Because you had movies like Ace Ventura, The Cable Guy, Aladdin. You know, you had great movies like The Lion King coming out. You had all these other films. And I'm like, that that's that's me. Like that, that's what I want. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I did high school theater. I was with an actor and I was on tech career. I worked behind the scenes and in front of the in front of the stage. Or I was on stage. And then I did some college theater. But then I realized you have to go through a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of hurt to make it into Hollywood and to make it into New York uh, theater or whatever, you know, wherever you may be. Uh, Because there are a lot of different programs in different states of of the United States. So I thought, okay, I don't want to go through that kind of pain. I want to just share my love of pop culture. But yet if someone wanted me to act in their small independent film, I'd still be willing to do it. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not that I never lost my love of acting. It's just I want to take my love of entertainment and movies and put that in a different form. So I went to a trade school for broadcasting in 2007 when I graduated from high school in 2006. And then I worked in radio in uh, Baltimore, CBS radio in Baltimore for about two and a half years. And I was a board operator. I was working, you know, late nights, overnight shifts, graveyard shifts, no fun. I didn't get any airtime. I mean, I took phone calls when we were doing a talk show about sports, which at the time I didn't care. I could care less about sports. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nowadays, Mm -hmm. I like college basketball. But back then I didn't really I didn't give two hoots about sports, but I took calls and I was like, okay, this is fun, but I'm not really doing anything. And then college came about and I met up with a group of people who were starting up a YouTube channel and, and I you know, got recruited. I was on their team and I worked with them and they said, we want you to do this. We want you to interview people. And I said, OK, I don't mind talking to people like I like meeting new people. I don't mind having conversations right, with individuals, right. whether they're autistic or not. It doesn't bother me. And that's the playlist that I was in charge in, which is nerd culture interviews dot 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 dot. So I started doing that and then I got into Facebook groups, you know, on social media and especially during the pandemic, those were huge during the pandemic. So I networked with a lot of independent authors, independent publishers and some other uh, creators out there, if if you will, Jason. And I will. I absolutely will. I, I, I really enjoyed talking with them. And I said, look, let's get you guys on the show. And then one interview led to two. And then two became five and then 10 became 20. And like, it just kind of snowballed during the lockdown, during the pandemic. And my heart goes out to everybody affected that by affected by that, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, but because of that, we we were able, I was able to grow my playlist and my other uh, teammates were able to grow their playlist respectively. So it really just snowballed. And then when the team left, when the pandemic sort of kind of more, more, excuse me, more or less came to a close, they said, hey, we don't want to do this anymore, but do you want to keep control of the channel because we're willing to give you the, the power to, to do it? And I said, yeah, I want to keep doing this. I, I'm having too much fun with it. Why would I want to stop now? Like, it's too much fun. Mm-hmm. So they gave mm-hmm. me, you know, in, in the, you know, they gave me the keys to the car, right? They gave me the keys to the castle and I just ran with it. I just ran with it. And I started doing different programs like the meeting of fandom and movie watch along and all these different shows. And now I get to celebrate my love of pop culture and movies and TV shows and going to comic book conventions, also known as comic cons here in the today's lexicon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I celebrate that every single week and and I'm meeting new people every week, or I'm hanging out with familiar faces every other week. Um, And I love that because the community of fandom and the community of comic con is so massive that there are so many different avenues you can go with it. And there are so many different people that have different feelings about different things. And I'm like, I want to hear that. Like, I want to hear those stories. And I want to understand why people are so passionate about being a writer or people are so passionate about being a cosplayer, for example, right? Yeah, or yeah. they're just big advocates for, you know, um, making sure that everybody is included uh, in Comic-Cons, whether they have a disability or not. And I'm like, I want to talk about that stuff because it's fun. To mm-hmm. me, it's just fun. And the, other, and the other thing is, the reason why I do this so much is because we're only on this earth for a very short time. So True. you've got to make the most of the time that you are given. So if all I'm doing is wallowing in my full-time <clears throat> job self 
<laughs> so <laughs> pity that I may or may not like, depending on how you look at it, because some people have full time jobs that may not like, and that's okay. Um, this gives me a balance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got, I got, you know what I mean? Like my work <laughs> is my work, but my podcast is my podcast. And that's what matters. So as long as you can balance the negative with the positive, I think people's lives will be pretty good. But it also depends on how you as a person look at it. Because I'm not going to say that the way I live my life is the right way. I'm just living my life the best way I know how. So well said. Well yeah, said. That's, that, that's how I started. And that's how I kind of evolved. And now we have I have 1,223 subscribers on my channel. So I bow to you. <laughs> I don't know if I'm deserving of that, but uh, it's because I'm a small fish in a very big pond of YouTubers. Let's be perfectly honest here, folks. But it's been a blessing. It's been a gift. And it's something that I'm always going to enjoy no matter how young or how old <laughs> I get. Because mm -hmm. I may look a certain way, but my, you know, my age tells you differently. But you're only as old as you feel. And life's an adventure. Just live it, man. Just, just yeah. live it and enjoy the most of it too, because life's too short to be angry. Life's too short to be sad. Life's too short to be upset with how somebody mistreated you a while back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. You just gotta, you gotta kind of like put it to the side or brush it off. Or, and by the way, I'm a huge advocate for this as well. And for someone who may be watching or listening to this, I agree with you. Mental health is extremely important. So do what's best for you, but make sure you just have a balance with things. Make sure you're happy, but also make sure you're not too upset at times. Because if you drown out the negative with, without the positive, then it's not going to go over too well. That's all I'm saying. True, true enough. And, and you and I also, there was a connection back there because mm -hmm. at one point I too wanted to be Jim Carrey. And oh, I yeah. found that sort of like in front of a classroom as a middle mm -hmm. school kid, um, mm -hmm. channeling the Truman Show and different things that I loved. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, the acting thing became more a public performance for me for teaching, which then mm -hmm. folds back into the podcast where I get to talk to creators and share their stories and things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, love how it, it's it's a worm. Uh, is it a Robberus? Or a Boris? One of those. One it's like those. the Aurora Borealis. It's like that's the Northern right. Lights. Yeah. That's right. One of those exactly. wonderful, shiny things that only comes once in a lifetime kind of thing. It's like eh, it's a diamond in the rough, one might that's say. Right. That's right. Yeah. If if one were to quote a Latin, which was another there you uh, go. title you mentioned a little while back. Do you know the words to the genie songs? Because we could sing. I mean, I do. I, I, I know most of them, but it's been a minute. So I'd have to go back and watch the tape of Aladdin, which is hashtag on Disney plus hashtag not a sponsor of my program or this one. But, um, True. but yeah, Aladdin is Aladdin is my number one favorite animated movie. It's my number one. It's no matter how many Williams. times I've seen. I mean, Robin Williams, bless his heart. And by the way, we miss you. Good, sir. We miss you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we miss both him and him and Christopher Reeve were like best friends. So Rest in peace to both Christopher Reeve and Robin Williams because they were both great friends at Juilliard. And they stayed friends after they graduated from Juilliard. So cool. more power to them because some people aren't like that. And it's a rarity. Oh. So bless both those men's hearts. And the new documentary Superman the Christopher Reeve story is out right now, which I hope to sit down and watch because the trailer is awesome. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to see it so bad. I just so. saw the promo for that in one of the comics I was reading. I think it was a Mark mm -hmm. Wade book. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, and Mark Wade. Mark Wade's a great writer, so for sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. he's my he's he's my favorite comic book writer. So there you go. Hashtag fun fact. He's solid. He's solid. So that leads nicely into the question of uh, maybe some of the most positive interview experiences that you've had when an interview has turned out extremely well. Say me, say me. I mean, well, I would like to say Jason <laughs> Hart, but yeah, you know, that's kind of being a little too biased here. No offense. You thought I was going to uh, be a jerk, and then I was all kind and. No, 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 <laughs> no, but, no, but J Jason's interview, your interview was great. Don't get me wrong. I but did enjoy it, that. It was a lot of fun. It was great. And a lot of people seem to enjoy it. It's getting some good replay value on our channel. So make sure you check out the, that episode. It's, it is in the and I quote playlist. So you can go back, you can find it. It's there. No problem. Uh, as far as some of the best interviews I've had on my show, I mean, man, there, but I cannot tell you uh, how many great moments we've had on the show. And the other thing is, if you had told me 30 years ago that I was going to have some of the biggest names in the business and some of the biggest names in artistry, some of the biggest names in acting, just or you know, just in general on my show, I, on a show for that matter, I would have said you were crazy. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. some of the moments, some of the highlights for me, because there's a lot of them, but some of the highlights for me do, do include Mark Wade. Mark Wade was on my show. 
that was pure gold because I told him how much Kingdom Come made me a comic book fan. I told him how much I love that story and how great the artwork by Alex Ross is and still is to this day. Absolutely. I mean, I just showed you the one I got from Paul Dini and the artwork once again mm -hmm. is by Alex Ross. That guy is a master of his craft, uh, if not an uber, like infamous master. It's infamous gallery. means that you're more than famous. This man, El Guapo, is not just famous. He's in famous so alex mm -hmm. ross and i mean this in the most kindest way you're in famous for being awesome so that's all i'm going to say because in famous is more so a negative connotation but anyway um that's the you know slash learner slash professor me coming out but anyway uh mark wade was great i think one of the best highlights for me i got to tell you this story because you're going to love this so if anyone who's ever heard the name jim and henson in the same sentence if you've ever heard of mm -hmm. jim henson i've heard that mm -hmm. uh guy gilchrist uh, was uh, and still is to this day uh, a cartoonist but he worked with Jim Henson for a number of years uh, right up until and after his death and Guy Gilchrist I met him at a comic con this was at a convention and I said I would love to have you on the show someday so I reached out to his representatives because that's what you have to do you have to go through proper channels mm -hmm. and we booked a slot and a time and a day and we did it and I gotta tell you Guy Gilchrist is certainly one of the highlights of my career because that man is so kind and so generous and so he's just so giving of his time. And not only that, when you ask him anything about working with Jim Henson or just working alongside the, the team that mm -hmm. worked with Jim Henson, he's got like an 8 million word story that you can't help but just pay attention to because mm -hmm. he draws you in, man. That's the point of a great storyteller is someone who can bring you in from the very beginning and you're just hooked from the get. So Guy Gilchrist was an honor and a privilege. He actually took out his replica of Kermit and interacted with me as Kermit. Nice. For a bit of that interview, which you can see on tape. That wasn't a behind the scenes thing that nobody saw. This is actually on tape. This is on film. So you can go back and watch the episode interview with Guy Gilchrist. It's on there, by the way, trust me. And it's one of the best heartwarming blessed moments i've ever had in my life i've been on this earth for three plus three over three and a half decades and i'll tell you what that moment was that's a moment right there like that's something mm -hmm. you just can't buy you know what i'm saying like you got you got to mm -hmm. experience that you got to live for it and and i was and we were talking about this earlier the greatest mo i was talking about this with one of my guests earlier he said i said to him the greatest moments happen when you least expect it you never know uh, when it's gonna happen when it happens it hits you. You know what I mean? Like it either hits you in the moment or it hits you after the fact, but it's huge. So guy Gilchrist, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to seeing him at the next convention I'm at. If he, if he doesn't in fact be tabling there, cause it all depends on the lineup. Um, but guy Gilchrist is a ma is the man and I love him. And he's, he's, I just, he's got a book coming out at some point about his time uh -huh. when he worked with Jim Henson. I think it's kind of a memoir kind of thing. I cannot wait, Guy, to read that as millions of people I'm sure would agree with me because you've got so many stories and I cannot wait to reach each and every single one of them because Jim Henson was one of the greatest creative minds in the history of the world. So, You, you Wade, had Kermit. Kermit, I had Kermit. Yeah, That's I had amazing. Kermit. I had Mark Wade. I had Guy Gilchrist. I had Kermit briefly, I might add. Briefly, but it was great anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, gosh, so many moments. But those are, two, those are definitely two of the highlights for me. I think if I had to name a third one, um just for argument's sake argument's sake um one of my independent writers because i've interviewed so many independent writers over my career including the, the young and great jason dehart over here yes um, so young the, so the young the so gray young. is coming through it exactly is. he's only 25 i don't know how that I, happened i am yes. it's cuckoo for cocoa puffs <laughs> but you know one of the people i really enjoy talking with as far as independent writers go i enjoy talking with everybody i mean everybody's been great i have no negative negative experiences i would say brian k morris Mm -hmm. from rising tide publications i don't know if you're familiar with him or not but I've brian the came, name. yeah okay yeah. brian k morris is a treasure trove of knowledge he's also a treasure trove of wonderful stories about how he got into writing books or how he got into certain properties that he was a fan of when he was a young boy or what he's into now uh and by the way that guy can go for hours like you forget about booking him for an hour he will go <laughs> for as long as it takes uh as much as it takes that guy is phenomenal in more ways than one and i consider him to be one of my good good and close friends uh brian kim morris if you're watching this uh much love to you brother much love uh he's a new pulp writer and love the he, pulp. 
yeah, the pulp is just phenomenal. And Brian knows so much to the point where I start using it in my a couple of my lectures at school where I teach a, I teach a course on film analysis. So the next time I see my students, I'll be dropping some fun facts that Brian K. Morris presented to me that I can present to my students. And I'll be, they'll be like, I didn't know that. Well, that's the beauty of life. Like you never know what's going to happen, indeed. right? You never know what you're going to learn. And Brian K. Morris and his friends, because I've learned a lot from their, from his friends, are some of the most kindest, generous, uh, wonderful people I've ever met. So Brian K. Morris, because I met you know Mark Wade and Guy Gilchrist are somewhat they're, they're big names in their own fields, but Brian K. Morris is an independent writer, and independent writers just are the some of the most creative minds in the world. So, mm -hmm. so thank you, Brian K. Morris. I love you. We've had we've had you on twice. We've had you on and I quote, and we've had you on the Meaning of Fandom, which came out a few weeks ago. Which, by the way, you should go back and watch that because Brian K. Morris' segment about how we got into new pulp or pulp uh, writing or pulp stories and pulp magazines, phenomenal. Just go nice. back and watch it. It's on the Meaning of Fandom playlist, by the way. It's episode eight, I want to say. Nice, nice. And the the independent writer has such a passion, such a drive, because it's not like it's the easiest gig in the world either. And it's not like you have all of this time to do it. Nope. No, you don't. It's very it's difficult. Passion. extremely hard work. <laughs> uh, now, I am also a big film fan. We didn't talk about that quite as much because we were talking comics and books and, and things. But my dissertation was actually about teachers using film oh. as text. So... Uh, always nice to have a, a fellow cinephile to chat mm -hmm. with as well i do it i i use clips i use trailers and some other uh things from movies or documentaries that explain a bit of the filmmaking process to my students so uh this is the first year i've ever done this by the way this is the first time i've been a, t a facilitator slash teacher and i gotta tell you i'm loving every minute of it uh it's 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 great i know it's early it's four weeks in you know people say oh you may like the job now when it's wine and roses but when you get deeper into it it may be <laughs> maybe your least favorite thing in the world but it's like you know what man if you love what you do it's not called work and if i keep loving what i do every week uh because this is a weekly class this isn't a everyday kind of thing this is a, a program for a, a place called the husband center for adults with autism so i'm working with autistic adults that are participating in the program and also i'm working with undergrad students who are who are uh taking part within the course because they're uh, getting their service learning hours so uh but it's a lot of fun and they love it uh, they all do all five of them love it so i nice, first nice. time i'm doing it first time as a facilitator slash teacher but i am loving the experience my students are loving it and if you love what you do it's never work absolutely uh well, one more question about questions and that mm -hmm. is if you could interview someone, this could be living, expired, uh, <laughs> passed on to the great beyond, what, who would you want to talk with in the world of film or literature or comics? And, and what would you want to ask them about? <laughs> do, do I really only have to pick one? Because there's so many I got my eye on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, as a podcaster, we as podcasters have our eyes on a lot of different people. True enough. Uh, but we'll we, take what? Top three? Top three? Top three? That's fine. That's fine. That we, yeah. that we want to have on our virtual sets, respectively. So here, here mm -hmm. it goes. I want to have Henry Cavill on set. I want to yeah. talk to Henry Cavill mm -hmm. because, first of all, he's been a giant nerd since for a very long time. So he's basically like us. And second of all, he's my favorite Superman as far as the films go. Not not the TV series, but just as, as the films go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is the man. No disrespect to Christopher Reeve because I know Chris, a lot of people say no one's ever going to top Christopher Reeve. I get that. But for me, because I'm a different generation than you guys are, and that's okay, Henry Cavill's the man. He's Ultra. the, he's yes, the man. He's the man. And not, not only that, he didn't get what he should have gotten during his tenure. He should have gotten his own trilogy. He mm -hmm. should have gotten a forequel. He should have gotten five movies, maybe six uh, movies by now. I mean, he re really, I mean, we're 10 years, 11 years into the Man of Steel movie. He should have had four sequels by now. So. True Unfortunately, we never got him. We got spinoffs. We got him involved in other people's movies and all that. And that's nothing against Henry. It's just the cards that he was dealt. Mm -hmm. But Henry, if you're watching this, I would love to pick your brain about playing the iconic character known as, as Kal-El of Krypton slash Superman. Clark Kent, the whole nine. I love Man of Steel. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I think it's a criminally underrated film for so many different reasons. Uh, and it's one of the better iterations of Superman that we've mm -hmm. had. Uh, mm -hmm. in a lot of different forms. And I think there could have been a lot more to be explored with that iteration of the character. It's just that we never really got it. We never got it. And yeah. it's nothing against Henry. It's nothing against uh, the people who make these films what they are. It's just it's just the cards that they were dealt. It's just the cards they were dealt. 
So Henry Cavill would be my number one. Uh, Henry, if you're watching this, reach out to me on Instagram, man, because I know you're on Instagram. Um, at and I quote channel, you're welcome. So I know we're going to talk about social media plugs later, but still. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> always be promoting, guys. Always be promoting. Uh, Henry Cavill's one of them. I would say another one that I would love to sit down and talk with a little bit. Hillary Duff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hillary yeah. Hillary Duff. I don't yeah. know if anyone's familiar with Hillary Duff, but Hillary Duff has done so many different things in her career, whether it's behind the scenes with producing, she was in Lizzie McGuire, she was in Agent Cody Banks, which by the way, that's a film I grew up on, folks. That shows I you how young or how old I am. Yeah. <laughs> Agent Cody Banks. Look it up. It's for free on YouTube with ads right now. Hashtag now sponsor of the show. And that was how that's how I was able to rewatch it, by the way. So nice. Hillary Duff would be a good, interesting person to talk to because she's done a lot of interesting things in her career. She and I just happen to be the same age, and I think that's cool. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to sit down and pick her brain about some of the things she's taken part in her career, whether it's the TV series Younger or whether she did Liz McGuire. If she's comfortable, talk about Liz McGuire. I know certain things are off limits when it comes to Liz McGuire, but if she's willing to talk about it, hey, great, more power to you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think she was also in that movie The Perfect Man with Heather Locklear. Yeah, I like to pick her brain about that. That. Mm -hmm. that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Chris Noth was in that. Um, that was a good movie, by the way. Uh, so Hillary Duff would be a second one. And if I had to pick a third one, because there's so many great names in the world that I would love to just sit down and talk with. Uh, man, this is tough. Okay, so I grew up watching a lot of different TV series. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a lot of them. There's a lot of different TV series. But I would love to talk uh, with this member of this cast because I just love this show so much. Um, if I could talk to a member of the cast of maybe the NBC series Parenthood or maybe uh, Friday Night Lights, like Kyle Chandler, for example, you know, Coach mm -hmm. Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, I think that'd be really cool. I think Kyle Chandler's got a lot of interesting uh, stories he'd like to tell us. But if I was able to interview anybody from, what do you call it, Parenthood, it would either be Peter Krause or Lauren Graham. Because Lauren mm -hmm. Graham has done, I mean, granted, most people know her for two things. One is Gilmore Girls, which I think right. is the bigger one of the two. And then the second thing is Parenthood. But to me, with all due respect to the Gilmore Girls fans, now, granted, I've only seen five or six episodes of Gilmore Girls, so I can't really say too much about it. But from what I've seen, her performance is better in Parenthood than it is Gilmore Girls. Nothing against Gilmore mm -hmm. Girls, because her performance is just is good, but it's not as good as Parenthood. That's just my two cents there it but, is. I like, but i'd like to interview lauren graham i i think she first of all she's published like what two or three books about her life she's got like two or three memoirs out now mm -hmm. which is insane by the way at her age because she's because i mean she's not even that old is she isn't she still in like her 40s she's so young i, I think she's in her 40s like early 50s, whatever it, i'm just like yeah i still like to pick your brain about parenthood because you there was a lot of things that happened during that series that i like to pick your brain about especially when you were dating, not dating in real life, but your character was dating Ray Romano. Mm, mm -hmm, I like mm -hmm. to pick her brain because that story angle was so good. I just like to pick her brain about it. Anyway, sorry, I probably raffled off one too many, but uh, no, not, those at are, all, not at all. Those are some of the names that I'd like to get on my set. And I think it'd be very cool if I were able to discuss different aspects of different projects with different actors. Totally, totally. And may it be so. May it be so. So I think we have time for one or two more questions. We should put like a nice little faux advertisement in right there. Um, if you have any, one of the sponsors that we've mentioned, uh, either real or imagined, we could totally put right there. Yeah. Thinking, thinking we could produce something. Um, so I'm curious, of course, about where people can go and find the information about the show and follow along. Uh, I'm also curious about this work that you're doing in teaching and what you're getting to explore with that as well. Sure. Uh, th thank you so much. Uh, this has been a lot of fun uh, for me. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to know more about my teaching, uh, I started running. I'm a facilitator for a program that meets once a week. It's at Towson University, which is located in Towson, Maryland, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, go Tigers. Uh, it's our university. It's our team name. So you got to represent black and gold are our colors. So rock on guys. Uh, so it's at the Husman Center for adults with autism, which uh, is a place where young adults on the autism spectrum ages 18 and up 
can participate in programs that are held during the fall and spring semester. So when school is in session. And sometimes we do have programs being held during winter break and during, uh, what is it, summer break, I should say. So visit us uh, online. You can go to towson.edu, uh, type in Hussman Center for Adults with Autism in the search bar. I know it's a mouthful. Uh, I think our actual web page is towson.edu, or was it towson.edu slash HCAA, which stands for Hussman Center for Adults with Autism. So you cool. can find us, uh, find us there, check us out. Uh, if you're in the area, if you have a son or daughter or a niece, nephew, whatever, that's 18 and over, they're autistic and they're interested in being a part of our programs, you can find out more about it there. I facilitate the program called Everybody's a Critic, where I'm basically teaching a, a program about film out, running a program about film analysis and uh, encouraging the students and autistic participants to become their own uh, film critics and, you know, kind of find their voice as a, a potential or aspiring film critic, if you will. That's uh, awesome. For, yeah, it's uh, we're four weeks in. So next week will be week five uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We meet for two uh, hour and a half with the main uh, participants and the undergrad students who are taking part in the program. And then the last 30 minutes are held as debrief sessions with the undergrad students to go over. Hey, you know, this is what we learned in the program today. What did you think? What are your observations? What are your feelings about it? Uh, that kind of deal. So uh, it's on Fridays uh, is when the program is. But then again, the schedule may or may not change for next semester. We don't know because it's too soon to tell. Uh, but follow us on social media there. We're on, uh, what is it, Instagram. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, just type in Husband Center for Adults with Autism uh, in the search bar for Facebook.com. Uh, but that's something I just started, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I hope it builds into something bigger and uh, bigger and better and something even more uh, because I love it so much. And if you love what you do, it's never called work. So that's my teaching, uh, thing or teaching gig that I have. And as far as the podcasting goes, follow me across all forms of social media, uh, personally at Ryan RPM and the number five, all one word. There's no like underscore or dashes, anything like that. Uh, Ryan RPM five. And then you can follow me on YouTube at, and I quote channel, which is where's my name tag. There it is. So, right. <laughs> And I quote channel is where you can find me on YouTube. We are on Facebook. We are on TikTok. We are on uh, Instagram. So if you type in and I quote channel as one giant word, uh, that's where you can follow us across all forms of social media. So don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, share, subscribe, <laughs> ring that bell. So you're notified when our videos go up or they go live because our programming is normally on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern time and then on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And then occasionally we'll do some Saturday night shows at 7 p.m. or uh, something during the week. Uh, if we do it during the week, it'll be at se basically 7 p.m. EST is our prime hour. And then Saturdays yeah. at 12 noon is our prime time for, uh, and I quote, the flagship show of the <clears throat> channel. So check us out. We talk about movies. We talk about TV series. We interview uh, indie creators from all over the world. Uh, we just interviewed uh, Demetrius of Hellspawn underscore cosplay on Instagram uh, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. week. We recently had Jason DeHart on about a week ago. Yes, we're going to plug him because he's oh, hosting this show. Uh, and he's a good, <laughs> but hey, he's a good friend of ours. He's a good friend of mine. And I like to support people who support me. So uh, he was on the show recently. We had a 40th anniversary watch along of The Terminator, which turned 40 this year. So we had Case and Austin of Movie Hero Network and the Dutch Star Wars guy known as Case. He was on the show that night. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And we also spoke with, uh, gosh almighty, who have we not spoken to this week? My gosh. Uh, <laughs> it's been a busy I, week. I, I, don't know, I know. I don't know why I'm blanking because I did this interview at 12 at twelve o'clock because Demetrius was at 7. And then we had Mark Maya on not too long ago. That was a great, mm -hmm. that was another mm -hmm. fun episode. Why am I blanking? Man, I have to look at my list here. Give me one second. My gosh, it's this fine. is going to kill me. I can't believe I'm doing this. I shouldn't be using cheat codes. Uh, Archie Jenkins, uh, Archie Jenkins Sr., excuse me, Archie Jenkins Sr. of 180life magazine, 180life.com. He was on our show uh, this cool. week and cool. he was uh, great to speak with and he's a good person to network with as, as well. Uh, he's from the great state of Texas, USA. So make sure you're following him at 180life.com. I think you'll really enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, those are some of our recent episodes. That's what we do. And if you're a fan of pop culture, we uh, at, at and I quote channel, we embrace the nerd within you. So there you go. That's our that's our mission statement. So there you go. You're welcome. And I, I love the respin of the David Mamet line. Always be closing. Always be promoting. I love that. Really that, nice job on that. There you go. Yeah. Yes. A B C. Always be closing. Always right. be closing. Yeah. I grew up. Uh, well, not grow up. Not grew up. Remind you, but I have seen the movie Glengarry Glenn Ross. So I know what mm -hmm. you mean. Absolutely. Always be Absolutely. closing, guys. Always be closing. <laughs>
That's right. And, and we will close on that, but I'm glad to come on your show anytime. I'm glad to have you back here anytime. Uh, the, the vibes are mutual. Well, thanks for having me. It was great to be here. It was great to be in the uh, the hot seat because these things don't happen too often. So when you get to turn things around on Ryan and put put me in the hot seat, it's people are like, "Ooh, I wonder what this guy's really like. Who is this guy?" Like, That's well, right. now you That's get right. now you now you get a chance to get to know me a little bit. In the words of our friendly neighborhood PSA, "The more you know." Yeah. You know. That's right. That's right. Love it. We can get the star. Maybe. 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 Maybe yeah. there's a star. It's if on it's, there. It's somewhere. We'll mm -hmm. put it in post. It'll be great.